Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will review the eighth studio album by the synth pop alternative rock new wave ish band, um, the Peshmos. Are they labeled as a new wave band? I'm not sure actually, but synth pop alternative rock electronics. So there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's their eighth record. Uh, yeah, Wikipedia does label them as a new wave band. Synth pop, synth pop, dance rock, electronic rock, and alternative rock. They were formed in 1980, so they are a full blown 80s accent. You know, they released records in the 80s. They peaked in the 90s or the beginning, the beginning of the 90s. Uh, we have nine tracks. This is requested by Amy K, who is a big fan of the Pesh Mode. Personally, I like the Pesh Mode. I wouldn't say I'm like the biggest fan of them, but. Uh, I like this album, yeah, I've always liked it, so there we go. Um, we have the first song, which is World of My Eyes, opens up things nice and easy, kind of slow and, you know, uh, what's the word here? Accessible. Not really a difficult song to give to give in to, but uh, all of the songs are actually four minutes long, the first couple of, yeah, the, actually the first four are four minutes long. And the other ones are mixed, so uh, yeah, there we go, good opening song. And then we have Swedish Perfection, which is a very relatable song for me since uh, it's primarily talking about being a perfectionist, you know, you want the Swedish perfection in something. Very relatable song, uh, yeah, it really did speak to me too. Uh, it is in between two of the biggest singles, so it is a bit overshadowed, but uh, you know, I'm still happy to hear and it's still a great track. Then we have Personal Jesus, which, is, which was a big hit for the band, I believe the first single of, of the album. Yeah, it is the first single of the album, I actually got it right for some reason. Uh, yeah, so a very catchy song, um, the riffs are very kind of like western inspired. Do, 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 do. You know, it, it's very western inspired I would say. Uh, Personal Jesus, hello, touch me, you know. Uh, the, the lyrics are kind of interesting in a way, they're really enjoyable, I think, very um, intimate, you know, personal Jesus. So, uh, an admirer from, a, you know, physical uh, distance, I would say, which is very close, mind you. So, uh, this is a very catchy song, uh, pretty much perfect for the, uh, you know, the first single and a classic. Then we have Halo, which is a very slow song, it's four and a half minutes long, but... Um, the production on this track is really great. Um, the overall atmosphere of the song is very uh, heavenly, you know, very like um, choir inspired and stuff, stuff like that. Definitely enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was good. Uh, yeah, and overall, I really love the song. I really love the atmosphere of the song. Like the really heavenly kind of uh, tone that it had. So we go. Um, and then it kind of transitions into a one and a half minute longer song and the album kind of goes up and down with these lengths uh, up until, um, you know, later on. And because up until this point we only had four and a half minute songs and uh, Personal G is branching out to five minutes but it's Personal G so it is a catchy track so no one really minds that. Uh, but I think that it doesn't really work for waiting for the night since this record is si uh, six minutes long. And nothing really grabbed me about the song. It, it is a centerpiece. It's not like one of the uh, one of the critical darlings of the of the second side, but it's not like one of the catchy opening songs of the of the first side. It's exactly pinned in the middle as kind of like a black sheep of the album, I would say. Yeah, it's pretty much my, my least favorite song. It's uh, the second longest song after the uh, after the biggest hit by the band. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and that would be Enjoy the Silent, which is pretty much my favorite track of the album. You know, going from the least favorite to uh, my favorite. Uh, what, a what a consistency on this album. Um, yeah, of course you have the, what is it? The synths on this track, the do 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 do. Um, yeah, and it's just a very iconic track. Enjoy the silence. I, who who can't relate with that? Fucking hell. Very great tra uh, title track, or it's a very great. Yeah, it's a very great titled track. 
very appropriately uh you know for the ending uh yeah so it is six minutes long uh it is four and a half minutes you know of music and one and a half minutes of actually silence so or actually two minutes i guess you know indicating that you have to enjoy the silence i suppose otherwise the title wouldn't be true of course it was cut out on the radio and stuff like that because who wants to listen to silence well if here was on the radio nowadays, you know, I just turn the shit off honestly, so. There we go. Um, yeah, the track pretty much pre speaks for itself. There's not a lot to say here because it's pretty much like a classic track. So there we go. Uh, Policy of Truth is pro probably my uh, second favorite song on the album. It's just a very like political uh, driven song. Um, lyrics are very hard and true, very harsh and also very raw. I love the production on this track, it sounds really crisp. Uh, just, a, an, just a really good song in general, very nicely produced, very nicely mixed. Lyrics are great. Um, yeah, this might be one of the best composed songs of the album, but Enjoy the Silence is just pretty much the, uh, the, the, the definitive Depeche Mode song. So Policy of Truth still comes close for that matter, but you know, it's not as good, but still pretty good. Then we got Blue Dress, which is kind of a middle of the road song for me. We have some nice instrumentation on this track. It's just a very nice track to listen to. It's just, um, you know, uh, very vague in a way, in, in the best way possible, I would say. Uh, yeah, it's a good track. Uh, the only problem I really have with it is that uh, it kind of goes on forever because it only, it's almost just six minutes long. And that's probably my flaw with the second side is that it is just a little bit too long for me. Although the record is 47 minutes long, so the record is kind of flawless in a way because the length is pretty, pretty great uh, for you know for the record that they're doing. Because I thought, oh, it's, you know, it's an experimental album, so it's going to be like an hour long. But at the end of the day, the best mode is a simple band, so you know you can make the hits too long, I guess. You can make the songs too long. Otherwise, uh, well. I would argue that the patch mode fans are pretty smart, but I don't know. You know, the kind the patch modes are the patch modes. The patch mode fans are kind of like uh, subjective or kind of like they differ. They differentiate in fans. You know, some of them are morons that just listen to the radio. Others are really like intelligent, like uh, new wave proc fans, I suppose. Uh, Art, artsy people, critics, I suppose, are critical darlings. Yeah, debatable, probably. Uh, yeah, so Blue Dress, it's a good track, but I don't think it's one of the best tracks of the album. It's just kind of there. And then Clean, um, I do like this song, the last song, but I do think that the, the audio, you know, the audio going up and down is really annoying. I don't know what 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 is that, you know, because it's kind of annoying, honestly. Uh, like you know the the volume gets turned down um, you know here and there so it's kind of annoying so I don't really mind that clean is a good song though I like the song but I don't like you know that the audio clips on this on this track it's really annoying so I don't know why the patchmo left it in or why they did that in the first place I'm not really sure but it was still enjoyable for that matter so there, so there we go uh, yeah overall this album is pretty classic. Um, I don't think it's as good, it's, it's not the best 1990 album, you know, from a particular um, channel, you know, who said it was, you know, sending it over Rust in Peace, okay, I can actually get the record, over Rust in Peace, nah, nah, but, uh, you know, uh, there's one good thing though, because it's rated second on Rachel Music as the best album of 1990. And if you go to the 1990 list, indeed, Rust in Peace, Victors at the top spot. So, I'm very happy on that. Yeah, there we go. It's number one and the Violator is number two. How it is intended, uh, you know, yeah, I might as well say it. Uh, watch Mojo, you know, they they flipped it, but fuck them. So, thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe to the channel and for videos like this one. Let me know what do you think of the uh, the patch mode on Violator. Do you think that record is better or this one? Let me know in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. I prefer to peace myself.